Philadelphia has always been a tough town. A town where you don't just chase your dreams, you tackle them. And that's what Vince Papali did. All I wanted to do was to be accepted. All I wanted to do was be part of a, part of a team. And all I ever wanted to do was be a Philadelphia Eagle. That was my dream. In the early 70s, already in his late 20s, a teacher, a bartender, an Eagles season ticket holder, Papali played just one year of high school football. He didn't play a single down in college. Sandlots were his stadiums, and semi-pro rough touch his leagues. Always the guy no one could catch. It was seven on seven. It was uh, seven guys. Uh, everybody was eligible to go out and make the reception. Everybody was eligible to, to make the play. And I was a speedster. In 1974, Papali's speed, honed while running track in college, earned him a spot with the new World Football League. But his career as a receiver with the Philadelphia Bell ended just two years later when the league folded. Papali was 30 years old when he went for an open tryout with the Eagles and their first year coach, Dick Vermeil. I first noticed Vince when we timed him in a 40. At that time, you, you used a stopwatch, not a digital stopwatch. And I think he ran around four or five, and he looked very good running. He said, hey, this guy can run. Coaches then sent players into seven-on-seven -seven drills. I'm the king of seven-on-seven. -seven. I play touch football for Max's, Cannon Cafe, Deacon Alehouse, Benny's Bar, the Gross Place. They couldn't touch me on seven-on-seven. -seven. So now these guys are trying to take my head off. Can't mess with me. I played with guys better than you. I played against Goop Delisio. You know, I played against, I played against Kiki Mamone, Mickey Spallone. You know, all these guys that I played against. You guys can't hurt me. After the tryout, Papali wondered if he had impressed the head coach. Well, there's no chance that he could play. I just said there's no chance. But you know, we're taking kids to camp. He could run. He had a tremendous, enthusiastic approach about the game, passionate about it, bubbly with sincerity. Give him a chance. Papali was invited to training camp, where he played in preseason games and made an impression as a sure-handed receiver and special teamer, surviving cut after cut, lasting longer than anyone thought. As the season started to get closer, Everybody start pulling for him. I was saying, Vince, you got to do this. You got to get to the next day. You can't take any crap from anybody. You got to get up, get in their faces. You got to take note. Just before the final cut day, Vermeil approached Papali on the field. I look at him, and I'm thinking, hey, this has been a really great experience. Thanks a lot, coach. I know, you know. And he and he says, congratulations, old man. He says, you're a Philadelphia Eagle. He says, nice job. And he shook my hand. And I went nuts. I went nuts. Papali's first call was to his first coach, to his father, to a Westinghouse steel plant and a man who worked there for 50 years, to a man nicknamed Kingy. They said, tell Kingy, hey, we're a Philadelphia Eagle. And all I could hear in the background was Westinghouse going nuts. It just erupted, erupted in, uh, in cheers and in celebration. And that's, that's the moment. It's the greatest, other than my children and my beautiful wife here, it's the greatest moment in my life. It was wonderful. So on September 19th, 1976, a lifelong fan and season ticket holder from section 724 suited up for his first game as a 30 year old rookie as a Philadelphia Eagle. I just sprinted out of that tunnel full speed i don't think my feet touched the ground and i went all the way to the end of the field in the end zone and i looked up in the stands and i saw my dad and i just pointed up at him and all my buddies i had season tickets with and they were gone ballistic they were absolutely gone nuts in that game papali became a special team standout in the fourth quarter, Papali picked up the fumble and ran it into the end zone, clinching Vermeil's first win in the NFL and defining Papali's style. He was absolutely crazy. He was going to throw his body around. He was going to bust the wedge. He was going to have a tough time getting out of bed on Monday. But he knew that was his role to make the team. He could fly right into the wedge and, you know, get up half the time. And, uh, you'd have to count to him to see if he understood how many fingers were up. He'd be dizzy and he'd go back the next time.
By the time Rocky was a national hero, Vince Papali was a team captain and Philadelphia's favorite son. And his story was real. He was uh, a hometown hero. You know, he was the guy like Rocky Balboa. You know, he ran up the steps and ran down the street. People throw him apples and the whole deal. I mean, so he was our Rocky. There was no doubt about it. It was simple. He was Philadelphia. I mean, it, it, Vince Papali uh, was the face of Philadelphia and the Philadelphia the football team. You know, this is a blue-collar town that loves to see tough, physical, hard-nosed football. You know, and that's how Vince played the game. After two seasons, the dream appeared to end in 1978 when Vermeil summoned Papali to his office on the final cut day to tell him it was over. I can't tell you the exact words because the both of us just started bawling. It was sadness because the love affair was over. I loved the Philadelphia Eagles. It became my mistress. It became my lover. And, 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 and it was great. It was passionate. And it wasn't going to be anymore. In fact, it wasn't over. Four weeks into the season, after an injury to another special teamer, Apolly rejoined the team. It would be his third and final season. But more than 25 years later, through legend and memory, the bond between a tough town and one of its hardest tacklers has never ended. I just love walking through the streets and people, strangers coming up and just saying, I remember when you played, you just made me feel so good. You gave us hope. Philly was looking for hope. They were looking for a hero and they said, here I am, take me for what I am. I'm having a ball and have a ball with me. And they liked it. Next fall, just as Rocky VI will be set to hit theaters, Philly's real-life Rocky story will also come to the big screen. Disney, who goosebumped us with Miracle and the Rookie, will release the story of Vince Papali. It's called Invincible. The former Sandlot-turned-NFL star will be played by Mark Wahlberg.